Hi everyone, my name is Arnold Custodio and welcome to another in motion hosting video tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at a WordPress two factor authentication plugin called Mini Orange's Google Authenticator. Just to be a little clear on this, because this can be confusing, there are two Mini Orange two factor authentication plugins in there, and they're both by the same company. But the one that we're looking at is the one that's specifically labeled Google Authenticator. And it has over 20,000 active installations, according to the WordPress plugin page. Uh, the other one is a lot less. So we're going to be looking at this one, which looks to be a little more mature. So we're going to go ahead and install this one right now to my WordPress site. Now notice that as soon as we activate the plugin, that it immediately gives you this wizard screen. So you can go through the wizard, and we're going to actually go through the wizard here just briefly, but it really helps if someone is not familiar with 2FA and they just need a little bit of a hand getting through the installation. This is a great option for those kind of users. You can also say, let's skip the wizard, but for now, we're just going to go and say, let's get started. So the first thing it's going to ask you is for inline registration, meaning do you want to prompt your users to set up 2FA after a login? So you could say users should set up 2FA after first login, or users will set up 2FA in a plugin dashboard. So if the plugin dashboard, they'll have to go into their profile to set it up, or you'll need to log into the WordPress, the back end of WordPress basically to set it up. But we can also set it up to do this, and then we can say continue setup. And that, that option will force the users to set it up after the login. Uh, do you want to enable 2FA for some or all user roles? And here you can see all users. And you can see the explanation here that they have here. Users have a grace period for configuring 2FA. You can configure the grace period and also exclude roles in the settings page. So for this one right here for the, for the wizard, we're not setting a grace period, but we are setting what users need to be enabled to FA. And here's the grace period option again. Should users be given a grace period or should they be directly enforced for 2FA setup? So again, here you can say, uh, I want to give them a grace period because, hey, some people might be a little confused by this at first. So um, we want to give them some time. This allows you to set it up in hours or days. So we're just going to go ahead and, and give them uh, five days, just a work week. Okay, and say all done. And after all that is set up, basically that's a policy that applies to all your users. Then um, you can configure 2FA for yourself, as it says here, or you can configure it later if you close the wizard. Now, there is one caveat to understand about mini orange two-factor authentication. Um, that you really need to know. They limit the number of users that you can set up for 2FA to three administrator users for the free version. I'm going to start up with the setup two-factor page instead of the settings page. So on the setup two-factor page, what you can see here is um, my account facts. These are all little um, areas you can click on to get more information, including the, the facts questions and add-on plans and C plans and pricing, which is for the premium version of this particular plugin. Uh, the, the tabs that you see up top, set up two-factor uh, authentication, settings, custom login forms, premium features, and add-ons. And then here you can see this says current plan and the plan that we're on is test and we're not on a plan. So this is the free version. There's also an option here for contact us for technical support, and they even have uh, OTP or one-time passwords over WhatsApp, which you can do, again, with the premium version, or you can get a trial version to try it out. Now, this particular screen, which is set up two-factor um, tab, is where if you were setting up your two-factor authentication for the administrator, this is where you would start. And you have these options, all these options here, Azure authentication uh, options. So, so you, you could choose 
Google Authenticator and hit configure and then we can set that up and we'll show you that in just a second. If you scroll down further, you'll see there's a bunch of options here also under premium plan. There's also a hardware token. So if you uh, want to do multi-factor authentication using yet another option for your uh, authentication uh, of your website, then you can have a key and that will uh, support it. And then there's some other options here like email. But let's go back here and we're going to go ahead and look at the Google Authenticator since that's what I have on my phone. I'm going to click on configure. And here what you do is you take your authentication device and you would select your authenticator application. And for Google Authenticator in the bottom right hand corner there is a plus sign and then there is the options for scan a QR code or enter a setup key and the setup key is down here. But we're going to go ahead and scan the QR code since it's really easy to do so. You just hold up your phone to show the QR code and boom, it sets up the account for you in the authenticator. Okay, so once you've got the, the account set up, you'll see on the second step over to the right here, it says verify and save and it's asking you to enter the code. So what you do is you type in the code that you see on your authenticating device and then hit enter. And then it tells you the 2FA setup was successful. It is interesting that they give you five different codes that you can use to test your login at this point. But what they're asking you to do is to go ahead and log in into another browser or incognito window just to make sure that you're not being locked out of the site when you're using your authenticator. So they give you an option to test it. So you click on test it. It'll ask you to type in one of the codes that you saw there and then submit and then you can see whether or not it worked. All right, so I hit back just to return back to the configuration screen. But the process for setting up two-factor authentication was pretty quick and simple. You can see that it's also turned green here for the authenticator, that's what I'm using. And there is a video here and also more documentation if you need that. Now for the authenticator as well, you have the option for downloading backup codes here. And that allows you to use the, the mini orange Google Authenticator if you don't have your authentication device. So I'm gonna click on the settings tab now, and we're gonna go through all the different options here. Here is enable 2FA for users, meaning that it's required. So it's a slider button here, you can turn it off or on. And it tells you if it's enabled or not enabled. And then the next one is enable plugin log, which is a log file for if you're troubleshooting the, uh, the plugin. Next thing is 2FA prompt on WordPress login page. Now we can see what this looks like. And here you can see the preview of what the prompt looks like. So the next option you see here is on the fly 2FA configuration. And this forces 2FA setup by users after the initial login, and this is enabled. So the next section is for grace period, and it's, as we explained earlier during the wizard, just a period of time that you give to your users to set up and configure 2FA. Here you see enable the login with all configured methods. This will help the user to log in with any of the configured methods, meaning if they're using Authy on there, they can use Authy. If they have the plugin downloaded for or upgraded for WhatsApp, you can do that as well. There are a lot of authentication options that Mini Orange provides. So here we can see select user roles to enable two factor four. And they say up to three users in the free version. This is where you can see, and here you can actually see that they actually state it in uh, their settings and again you can set up um, the roles here and each of these roles can also have a custom redirect which is a great feature as well so if you have a separate piece of information that you need to give to your administrators or editors you can set up a specific uh, redirect for them and you can do the same thing for the others and again this is a premium feature so right now it's grayed out until you upgrade to the premium version so let's go back to custom login forms. 
A custom login form is a form that's being used for logging into WordPress that's been set up there by an add-on like um, WooCommerce, for example. They have a, their own custom login. And you can see all the different ones that are supported right off the bat here. So in spite of the fact that many orange two-factor authentication is limited to three users for the free version, you can see that there are quite a variety of options that are given for this plugin. So if you are a single user and you have a blog that you want to secure, but you want to be able to use um, some different methods to log in other than the uh, Google Authenticator, this is a pretty good option. Thanks for listening to this tutorial. Please provide any comments and feedback below. If you liked this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Check out our InMotion Hosting Support Center for help with your website. We provide thousands of step-by-step -step guides, videos, and much more to lead you towards making your online project a successful one. You can find us at www.inmotionhosting.com support.